Hey guys, welcome to another exciting episode of the Stash Report from the Stash Project. Today is the 18th of March, 2016. It's a four-day weekend for some drunk Irish people I know, but for the rest of us, well, there is the Stash Report. Uh, we got some new stuff to talk about here, a few uh, new decals to talk about, some uh, little kit announcement stuff to discuss, and of course it's been a very, very busy week this week with kit releases. Uh, as I expect, probably next week will be as well, uh, being that there's still about half the list of things uh, that we're working with here. Probably, well, not half the list, probably about another six more kits that we're expecting for the month of March. Uh, on the kit announcement side of things, it's not official announcement as there is no kind of no uh, actual release date on it, but we have seen uh, there is now box art uh, been done for a drag version of the 65 Belvedere. Now, this is not the uh, 65 satellite, the Melrose Missile kit. This is going to be Butch Leal's California Flash, uh, which will be based on the 65 Belvedere Post, uh, you know, sedan, a.k.a. sedan. I mean, it was a two-door sedan, as they like to call them back then. Uh, so it's not going to be the, uh, if you've noticed, the, the Mopar Missile kit, the first Mopar Missile kit uh, that they're going to do, because they're allegedly an alter wheelbase one off in the future at some point in time. Uh, you know, is the uh, the greenhouse of the satellite, the uh, hard top rather than the uh, post sedan. So that is coming down the line at some point. Uh, again, uh, there's no real uh, announcement on what kind of time, probably the fall, I would imagine, uh, as the, uh, you know, the streetcar still has not actually arrived yet. Uh, none of the Mobius kits are in this week. I was hoping this would be the last model show uh, we attend this weekend for about a month. I was hoping the sort of ring out those couple the couple three Mobius kits that are coming out or and uh you know be done with my purchasing more or less for uh the spring on, on the domestic side of things but it is not to be or at least it uh is not to be on eBay uh for those people who want to talk about of course for all the subs and all my friends we will be out at the Buckeye Scale Classic this is going to be Sunday the 20th out in uh Hilliard the northwest suburb of Columbus so back to Columbus uh, hopefully for a more uh, conventional show <laughs> than the IPMS show was back in February. We all are well aware of the problems that show had uh, to the point where it chased uh, people's videos offline for a little while. Um, I guess, uh, what was I going to say? It's a, that one's a participant uh, choice. Uh, it's not general mission people's choice like our show uh, that we just did here last weekend was. However, uh, it is basically still people's choice you just have to have built a model in order to get a ballot for the voting um da -da 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 -da. i'm trying to think if there's anything else in this new kit release i don't think so i think that butch leo's pretty much it uh we saw some things get added to stevens international from round two uh you know since it's those are so far off in the offing like the actual legitimately almost christmas time when i'm going to talk about uh what they are because plans change uh day to day <laughs> with round two it tell you something's going to come out next month and then it doesn't get you know it all wait there's a year delay we found some tooling issues we didn't realize we had so uh on the decal side of things um we're going to talk about the kit itself here in a half a second but they they're uh the company is called uh Regé model it's based out of czechoslovakia uh they do decals mostly for rally cars uh people who watch the channel religiously will recognize the name because I bought a set of uh, GT3 decals for a uh, Zach Speed uh, Mercedes SLS from them. It's the only GT3 decal set they've ever done. So they're going to have a total of eight sets of decals coming out for the new uh, Bell Kits Ford Escort, and these are going to be the first three. Here you see the uh, uh, Piot and Porter-driven uh, 1972 Monte Carlo Rally fifth-place finish car. Uh, sponsored by BP. This is the uh, McCullough and Piot piloted uh, Rally of Monte Carlo 1969. Uh, so I assume that this uh, car can go back that far as far as what it's correct to be because the, obviously the kit itself has been marketed as a 72-73. And then uh, while these decal sets are not yet available for order anywhere, they're just, they're just uh, sort of announcing them, giving stock numbers and, and, and all that sort of stuff. They should be... Uh, you know, available probably maybe late this month or early next month. Uh, this one right here is the uh, 
the uh, Daily Mirror Rack Rally 1974 winner with uh, Timo Makinen and, and uh, Lydon doing the uh, co-piloting there, or the uh, navigating, I guess. <clears throat> this will be the set of decals I pick up because uh, with the kit you get the 72 rally winner, the Rack Rally winner, and the 73 Rack Rally winner, so this will make you know three sort of in a row. And uh, at some point in time, in, you know, I don't know, 25, 25, when I get around to building those escorts, uh, you know, then I'll have a, a sort of a collection uh, that could be displayed that way if I wanted to. There are certain IPMS uh, contests that have a collection category where you can build, where you can display three or more of, of a very similar type thing. Uh, they try to make it be something along the lines of, uh, you know, three of the same airplane, three of the same, but you know, whatever, but... Uh, three cars that won the uh, rack rally in a row. That's a col that's a similar kind of thing there. Another thing we're talk about real quick. This is the taboo design uh, graphics or taboo design decal graphics, I should say, for the uh, Lotus. Uh, what was it? The ninety five, I believe, is what it was. Ninety ninety seven T. The Lotus ninety seven T. This is the the uh, one twenty scale F one car that was released last month. That I said looked like a John Player special car. But since it had none of the decals, I didn't know for sure. Well, here, this is going to be released later this month. Um, it is all, of course, the John Player decals that you need to make the car correct. Uh, Taboo will also be doing a set of uh, decals for the Ferrari F187 88C because that car, as it stands from the uh, standpoint of the real thing, uh, was also sponsored by Marlboro in addition to... Uh, Fiat and uh, the rest of the normal Ferrari Fiat uh, family of sponsors. You see a lot of the same things. Uh, you know, the uh, Alfa Corsa team from the uh, DTM side of things had the more or less, you know, they weren't supposed to buy Ferrari, they were supposed to buy Alfa Romeo, but since it was all sort of the same, um, you know, family of, of business, so to speak, the uh, a lot of the same sponsors carried over between all the uh, different things. Sorry. There was a cat, and, you know, it didn't go quietly, <laughs> to put it mildly. So let's talk about the kit releases we got this week, because we got a lot of them. Uh, on the domestic side of things, the two Ravel kits are out this week uh, for their uh, March run here. This is the Snap Tight. Notice it's not really being uh, run as a boat and play, even though technically that's what this is. It's being released as a skill level 2 snap tight. It is like the bottom basement skill level 2, or a skill level 1.2 maybe would be better. Uh, it's like 17 pieces. The only thing about this that's a little bit different than the normal boat and play is that there are uh, disc brake detail on the metal axles that you use to put the uh, wheels on, so that there's a little bit of depth to that. There, and then you know you can vaguely see the part outline parts outline in that little left uh, window up there in this box art that I or this box that's well, not box art it's just a real actual box that I stole blatantly off of eBay this morning when I got up. Um, so yeah, I mean it is what it is in the sense that it would have been great if this was a full detail 105 part kit with an engine and everything else, but it is not. It is you know the, it was this year's toy uh, toy. Well, it's a toy, but this year's auto show giveaway, and this will be the commercial release of it for everybody else. Uh, some people will bitch that this is not the same color that it was molded in for the for the auto show, and they're you know they're being ripped off because they have to deal with this blue color instead of I don't know what the what the color at the auto show was, but uh, you know, people will whine about anything, I guess. And then uh, this is the other March kit. This is the 1967 Camaro RSSS uh, Nikki Chevrolet 427. Um, so there's, you know, the obvious things when you look at this box art that are new about it, of course, has the new RS grill that uh, at least eliminates part of the problems with the original kit with the wet, the uh, wonky SS grill that it had. You also get the Stinger hood that, uh, you know, a lot of people will like. This kit also has an RS interior. It has tubular headers. It has uh, traction bars for the rear end. You get the new wheels for it. Um, so there's, you know, quite a few additions to this kit in the, in the sense of making it an RS. Now it is only going to come with the big block. Uh, I don't know if it comes with a flat hood or not. It's 126 pieces, so it doesn't come with another engine or anything, anything like that. So I don't know how close to building an actual RS you could do without actually having to go back and buy the other SS kit for the smaller engine and stuff like that. But it is the next, uh, variation of this tooling, 
Um, again, we've discussed in the past the weird wonky proportions that the whole back end of the car has, which keeps me from actually going out and buying this. Been so much better if they would just, uh, while the car you know doesn't share a lot of sheet metal, would have been better if they at least gone from the patterns of the '69, which uh, you know. Again, it's it's not like they could just recopy the 69 body, but whoever did that should have done this too instead of whoever did do it. But anyway, uh, you know, what do you, you can't really do much about it. it. It is what it is, and, you know, Ravel will forever until, you know, the modelers of the uh, U.S. unite and actually demand actual real model kits instead of these uh, sort of goofy, weirdly proportioned things we've been getting for about the last four years. Uh, you know, the 29.4 is probably the best thing we've gotten out of the last uh, two or three years out of Ravel. That's uh, not a reissue of something else like the 66 Chevy pickup. Well, that's a good kit because it's really the 90, the, really the 1964 with different side scripts and different decals. Okay, well, the 64 is, you know, an old model kit from the, you know, the mid-1990s. It's a different development team. Back when Ravel actually seemed to care, uh, I'm not saying that they don't, but you know what I mean. Uh, you know, really, that's probably the best thing. I'm just sort of sitting here peeking. And that's probably the best thing that they've uh, given us in the last four years was the 29 Ford, as far as being a new tool. So I look forward to the to, uh, the uh, 30 Ford, um, the the um, roofed version. It's not going to be a stock height roof. It's going to be a chopped roof. Which isn't a big deal. It's a hot rod, so uh, I'm not going to sit here and go, well, I need a big a box, the factory stock uh, 34 model. And now uh, the hot rod's perfectly fine with me. Uh, the one thing that everybody has sort of picked up on, and the uh, dogs and rainbows, puppies and unicorns uh, crowd has uh, seized upon us as being picky, is the fact that in the test shots that were shown at NNL West this past weekend, the uh, car, which has a small block Chevy in it, which I know will piss off a lot of Ford people, uh, has a seven point distributor. Now, this would be a gaff of minor proportion if when the uh, Hemi Cuda, the new tool Hemi Cuda had come out, what, two years ago, it had also not had a seven-point distributor. Clearly, somebody, either in Illinois or in uh, China, and right now Illinois is blaming China wholeheartedly, uh, needs to watch Dora the Explorer because my child can count to ten, and when I had her count the distributor, she said there were seven of the little points on it, not eight. Uh, hopefully, they will fix that. Allegedly, the rumor is that the distributor had eight points when it left Illinois, and something happened when they printed the test shots, and all it has seven. So somebody can't count, and <sighs> Hobby Cat is being slightly distracting. Look, I don't think you guys have seen this Hobby Cat. Here's Hobby Cat 5. Actually, that's Hobby Cat 1. The other ones are <laughs> came after that one. Um <clears throat> But, you know, it's just one of those goofy little things. It's like, really, come on, guys. Just, the small block Chevy's been around since, what, 1953? Something like that. We don't know how many points the distributor has on a small block Chevy. But beyond that, beyond that little goofy thing about the uh, the distributor, the kit actually self, itself looks really nice. Um, you can sort of see the fingerprints of uh, various people who no longer work at Ravel or, unfortunately, are no longer with us uh, because they passed on. Uh, fingerprints all through that kit, and... It was a, a pet project for a few people at Ravel, and they, uh, you know, they actually cared about that car, and so you actually see the results in it. Uh, it's going to be a very nice kit in the sense that you're going to be able to build the, uh, you know, like a high boy out of it, and the uh, regular, I don't know what you call the Z frame, like the 29. Uh, there's going to be a complete skeleton interior uh, with bomber seats. It all looks very nice. Uh, just really seriously, seven, eight. Come on, count with me here, folks. Um, and they also have the 48 Ford Coupe on display, so that actually looks halfway decent, too. Um, a lot of people were like, well, you know, I'm scared of what the proportions of the 48 Ford Coupe are going to be like. I have to believe that that was always tooled up because it's the way tooling is done, you tool all the variations of something at once. You don't just constantly go back and peck at it unless you're adding stuff like wheels or something like that. Um, the the Camaros are a prime example of that. Uh, you know, you tooled the the, the the Camaro, the Camaro uh, Baldwin motion, the Camaro uh, Yanko, as well as probably the convertible, all at the same time, and then they were sort of released out slowly throughout the 90s, and then the new kit, the new one that came out a couple years ago, the ZL1, was just the addition of the uh, uh, dog dish hubcaps and the steel wheels out of the Copo Nova, so you're really just using a tooling insert of another kit to make another kit of the Camaro. 
His is similar to the sense that all of the Mobius four pickup trucks, all those parts were cut at once because we accidentally saw. We didn't show them online because they were requested not to, and we just went ahead with it. Uh, but somebody accidentally leaked pictures of all the parts runners. So everything that those seventy fours were about, as far as all the grills and all the tr all the short beds and long beds and engines and suspensions and everything, was all shown at one time by accident, and it was all cut at one time. But we're slow rolling those kits out. You got the seventy model king whenever it comes out, and then there's a seventy two four pickup truck coming out, and there's still a four four by four coming out. But they cut the tools all at one time because you're not going to go back, like I said, and constantly piddle with it and add stuff and subtract stuff. So I have to believe that probably the the stock body was tooled up back then, and maybe you know in the period of time that you're uh, thinking about, <laughs> there's gonna this cat is gonna try to go across the top of these bookshelves, <laughs> and then we're gonna have to pause the video because we're gonna chase the cat. Um, but until then, the 48 Ford you know was done as a convertible, then the Woody, and then the the uh, you know the chopped custom roofed hot rod. Uh, and like I said, I believe that the, the stock body, if it was never cut into tooling, it was designed back then because it just has the same feel uh, as far as the way it looks, proportion-wise, as the original kit. And the original kit, of course, is back from the, uh, what, mid-90s or so. <coughs> Pardon me, guys. Bear with me. I've been, like, having a – it's not a cough. It's not a cold. It's just, like, a cough that's coming and going. And uh, I don't know if you guys can hear it in my voice or not. So, moving overseas, uh, there are a few new, well, there, some of these are reissues, some of these are new. Uh, one that is kind of a mixture of both is this. We talked about it last week or maybe the week before. This is the f the uh, first injection molded Studio 27 model kit. Um, but as we discussed, this is actually the rebox of the Tamiya uh, Walter Wolf WR1 F1 car. That they've gone and added new body parts, a bunch of photo etch, um, some mesh, obviously new decals, new tires, there's a resin helmet, all sorts of stuff to turn it into the Theodore Racing uh, Walter Wolf WR3. Uh, this kit, like we said uh, last week or the week before, is going to run you about 80 bucks because of the fact that it's a limited production run of a Tamiya kit. It is 120th scale, like most F1 cars are. And, uh, you know, that's about, you know, all we can tell you about it uh, in the sense of, I don't, you know, I don't know how good or bad the Tamiya Walter Wolf WR1 was. I assume being a Tamiya kit, it couldn't be too, too awful. Uh, but this kit actually legitimately is so run by Tamiya that it has Tamiya's instruction sheet with it. And then you get to the Studio 27 supplemental instructions for the rest of the body parts. Uh, in keeping with the F1 theme, uh, Fujimi has five kit reissues that are so long ago and far away that they're considered to be new kit reissues, or new kit issues, I guess I should say. This is the Ferrari 126 CK, 154 parts of full detail, 120 scale F1 goodness. Uh, this will get you the 1981 Spain and Canadian Grand Prix as far as the decal versions go. I don't know that this thing has any tobacco sponsors on it because I didn't look at it, but so far there's been no decals announced for it. Uh, it comes with two sets of tires, including a set of rain uh, shredded rain tires. Uh, you saw that in the Lotus 97T has had that well as well. I don't know that every single F1 car that Fujimi did has two sets of tires. I just know that they're talking about this car having two sets of tires. Also, keeping with the Ferrari theme, this is the Ferrari F187 slash 88C. You can build it as either or, the 87 or the 88C. As far as the decals go, you got the 87 Japan Grand Prix and the 88 uh, uh, Grand Prix of Italy, or the Italian Grand Prix, I guess I should say. This car does need the Marlboro uh, logos that are going to be produced by uh, Taboo right between the Fiat logo and the seat, there should be a great big Marlboro logo. And, well, there obviously isn't one because we have to save the children from the evil tobacco company. And while we're saving it from that, we'll save it from this, too. This is the Williams FW14B. This will give you decals in here to do the 1992 uh, British, uh, Hungarian, and um, Grand Prix of Monaco. So three different uh, race versions that you can go from there. Uh, of course, there should be camel decals for this. Uh, as well as, uh, I'm trying to think what beer sponsorship this is. Oh, it has uh, Paps, or not Paps, <laughs> yes, it has Paps Milwaukee Brewing F F1 cars. It has Labatt's uh, logos for it. 
uh, for certain races and certain drivers. Uh, again, there are already existing taboo decals, uh, taboo design decals for the camel uh, logos themselves, or you can get another sheet that includes replacements for the entire car that includes the uh, Pabst uh, logos as well for the other drivers. Um, one's like $5, one's like 13 bucks. Yeah, buy the $13 one. You might as well replace all the decals while you're at it, right? Uh also from Fujimi, the one of the street cars this month, this Boeing 124 scale is the Lamborghini Diablo, uh, Diablo four wheel drive uh, Black Star. Uh, the difference between those two things is basically the four wheel drive Black Star has a transaxle up front for the four wheel drive that you promptly bury in underneath chassis detail, so you'll never know it's even there. And the four wheel drive has a rear spoiler, <coughs> excuse me, that the Diablo does not. Beyond that, it's the same set of wheels. It's the same sort of weird kit in the sense that uh, it has, you know, this weird die casty, snap tight feeling to it. So. And last but not least, from the, whoops, went backwards on me there, folks. Last but not least, the, uh, Art dump. <laughs> this is the last of the, uh, what I believe considered to be called the available Mitsua tooling. Uh, this is the coup de gras of all of the kits that have been released so far. Uh, this is the Mitsubishi Fuso underneath all of what's going on there. Uh, done in the Japanese, I don't even know what the, what the style is called. <laughs> <laughs> you want to say bazooka, but that's a car thing with a big weird exhaust. I I don't know. It's the whole cab is 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 chrome plated. Actually, you can build this as a regular Mitsubishi Fuso. By the way, they include the regular decals and everything else. I don't believe the Mitsubishi Fuso is actually canceled. But if you didn't want to build this, and for some reason you can't find the Mitsubishi Fuso dump truck, you can build just a stock dump truck out of this. But why would you want to when there's missiles on the top of the dump truck? I, there's just <laughs> You look at this, you just sort of puzzle at it, and you look, you're kind of speechless for a little while, and you're like, why? It's, this is a cultural divide thing right here. You know, I'm with the Japanese on a lot of the kit stuff, and, you know, they got a weird taste, and there's all that sort of stuff, and you could say what you like about Japanese cars and Japanese car culture and, and you know, all that, and then Toyota being a NASCAR and all that kind of stuff. But this right here, this is this is one of the things that's going to make you stop and look at it for a little while and just puzzle over what in the Sam hell is going on here. Because there's so many lights, and there's missiles, and there's rockets, and there's there's, there's the bumper, and the, oh my goodness gracious, there's just so much going on here. Uh, it's... <laughs> I, it's irrelevant what you can do with it. You got to build it this way. You got to build if you're going to go out and spend uh, close to seventy dollars on this model kit. <clears throat> you got to build it as the art dump truck, right? You can't possibly build it as anything else. It's almost irrelevant what the other parts content is. Uh, it's just an entire. I think there's five or six parts runners that do nothing but replicate all of the goofiness that you see here. Plus, obviously, there's a whole nother spare cab because uh, the cab itself is plated. Of course, the issue with that is that more than likely it's plated right, you know, straight off the runner, so it's going to have all the mold lines and everything underneath the plating. Uh, so, you know, you're looking at all cladding it or setting it out to get chromed or spray chromed or whatever anyway, but I don't know. It's just, <laughs> I've seen this kit before, obviously in the Mitsua boxing. We've talked about this being a possibility that someday that Fujima would get around to, re you know, to issuing it this way. And then you actually see it, and like I said, you're just gobsmacked at the at what's going on there. It's just so much is going on there. Um, over at the Aoshima camp, on the other end of the spectrum, is this factory stock Auto Zam AZ1. Uh, this is technically a reissue, but the factory stock bare bones AZ1 has not been reissued or not has not been available. I guess I should say uh, for I want to say eight years at least. Um, at least based on the last reissue date over on Hobby Search, uh, you know there is a there were, they did two or maybe three versions of this of this AutoZam. One is a Mazda Speed, and there's another. Uh, I'm trying to think what that what it's got some weird alphanumeric designation to it. Uh, that was I think it's an AZ1 M2, which was the second uh, later production version of the AZ1 that has like these great big fog lights right in the middle of the hood. Um, which allows you basically to build every auto zam that was ever made. This is the first, you know, the first gen, and then the AZ uh, AZ one M two is the second gen, and then there was the Mazda Speed version. I think there might have been one or two other goofy little things along the way, uh, but 
this is you know like i said basic factory stock uh reissue but it hasn't been available for a while so it's considered to be a new kit i think it might actually have a new stock number uh and then the last two kits that came out this week from uh not japan but belgium are the ford escort kits uh these are officially in stock uh got billed out for mine so uh the uh, people in Europe may have gotten them last week. I would assume it would be because obviously for anybody who like me ordered them through uh, Hobby Link Japan, we had to wait for Aoshima to actually get them from Belkets to distribute them in Ch in Japan to get them. So uh, there are two kits. Uh, these are basically the exact same kit. The only thing that's different about them is the livery. This is Roger Clark's 1972 Daily Mirror Rack uh, Rally winner. And then uh, the other one, the one that was always known and sort of shown as, was the, as the promotional box art and the original uh, release of this kit, and that is Timo uh, Mackinen's or Makinen, uh 1973 Daily Mirror Rack Rally winner. Uh, both these kits include photo etch parts. Both of them include night race parts. Uh, and both of them have left-hand and right-hand drive steering uh, and all the associated uh, dashboard and wiper parts. Uh I don't know. I really wasn't into these uh, when they were announced, but it sort of grew on me over time, just seeing the kit in development. Uh, I originally planned to just buy one of them to build sort of a post-rally uh, retired car that was just going to be sort of a black car that, you know, didn't have livery on it at all. Uh, <laughs> and then... I don't know, I started playing around with it, and uh, maybe I'll get both of them. But one is a rally car, and the other one is not a rally car, uh, whichever you know decal set I like better. Uh, and then sort of put it along that you're going to be able to get that 74 rack uh, decal sheet. And, uh, yeah, so now I have three of them. Yeah, that's how addiction works, folks. That's how hoarding happens. Uh, moving on. Aoshima had some spot runs this week as well. Uh, these are all kits that are just being restocked into the system at various vendors. This is the top secret tuning house. Nissan Fairlady Z, basically what we would call the 350Z here in the in the States. Uh, but this is a JDM spec model. I don't, uh, As far as I know, there is no left-hand drive to this kit. It is only right-hand drive. Uh, Aoshima made an export version of this kit. Uh, at some point uh, to make a 2007 350Z. Uh, you can find them on eBay. They're not that common per se, but they're also not really, really, really hard to find. Uh, but this one, like I said, builds a Japanese tuner car. Uh, they're reissuing the their version of the Nissan Skyline R34 GTR Nismo Z-Tune. The Vertex Ridge S15 Nissan Silvia. The A's Max V Cruise Toyota High Ace Wagon. This will be the V100 version of the High Ace. This will be like uh, late 90s, early 2000s. And then the Boxy Style High Ace. And this is a 2010 version. Uh, both these kits, but all the van kits, the, all the High Ace van kits, regardless of whether they're factory stock, street uh, replicas, or they're some sort of VIP American style tuning, which I just don't get because so obviously we don't even get these vans in the United States for them to be American style in the first place. Uh, they all include uh, working suspensions, so you can adjust the suspension uh, via screws, much the same way you can with the uh, Toyota Crown Royal Crown, uh, the Crown Royal Saloon, the Crown Athlete, and the uh, crown majesta <coughs> and they also uh, have opening back doors and then last but not least uh reissue of the toyota corolla 11 gt apex which is the uh, aero package that you see on the uh, kit itself lower body cladding and a spoiler uh late version because they they did also an early version of the toyota 11 uh, that kit hasn't been out in a really long time, and this does include the engine insert. Now, it's the same engine insert that's in all the initial D kits. Uh, this is the only way to get 11 with an engine right now. They do have a couple of different 11 kits available. I think there's a Toyota Racing Development uh, one very similar to the uh, to the Truno N2 uh, that's uh, out and about, and it's not hard to find. I think it was just reissued not that long ago. Uh, is that the one they're reissuing here next month? No, they're issuing they're reissuing the Truno version. So that means the eleven version uh is still in production or still available. Uh the actual street version, the uh is a, of a nineteen eighty three. I'm looking at it over here. Uh 
I think this kit came out in 2005 the last time. Something like that. I'm trying to look at the, the box art. Anyway, the, the stock number four. Well, not the stock number, but the kit number, if you ever noticed. The best card. It'll say best card GT with a number. Uh, the best card GT number on the 86 Toyota 86 Levin, uh, Corolla Levin 1983 early production is 80. And uh, best car vintage uh, GT kit number 80 right now is the Toyota Sambar uh, pickup truck. So <laughs> it's been out of production so long they've recycled the kit number, so to speak. Not the stock number, the big long code number, but the actual uh what, you know the number in their system. Yeah, yeah, it's been out of production so long. Yeah, we don't even talk about it anymore. And so, guys, that uh, wraps up this week. We're still waiting on the uh, Martini Alfa Romeo DTM car from Tamiya. We've got three more kits out of Hasegawa. They're all rally car reissues. Or I should say two kits in the photo watch. Uh, there's still one more kit out of Fujimi, and uh, one more kit out of Aoshima. Well, actually, so one more reissue out of Aoshima, and then of course the three new kits. We've seen box art. We've seen finalized box art uh, for the Sesto Elemento. We've seen finalized uh, photo etch and all the detail parts. So the detail parts are done as well. Uh, and then, of course, we've seen the box art for the initial D uh, battle uh, between the RX-7 and the, G and the R32 GTR. The only thing we have not seen box art for or any kind of finalized plans for is the Sandbar fire trucks. So that may continue uh, on into the future. But at least those two new toolkits will be done. And uh, they're starting to very, uh, do the very beginning teases for the uh, second quarter flyer. Uh, right now, I can only tell you there's one 124 scale car on it, and it's going to be a new tool. Again, it'll be something I think you guys will like. Uh, and then what the rest of the stuff is, I mean, I, uh, I know what the stuff should be, but how it's going to come out over the course of the year, you know, depends on what they have going on. Uh, but once that Sesto gets out, that's going to, uh, you know, break a little bit of a log jam of projects because that was the priority was, oh, my God, we had to get the Sesto out because, like I said, it was, I think I I ordered mine in August of last year. So it's, it's you know, we're working on, what, six months now. And usually, you know, when you announce a kit and you give a release date, it's usually about three months in advance. So, uh, so like I said, one, two, three, four, five, five, six, seven, seven more kits to come out this month. And then, of course, the three Mobius kits, so technically ten uh, but we'll see with the Mobius kits. Also, before we go, 54 Hudson Special, the uh, Fastback kit that's coming out, is not going to be the Junior Drag car. Uh, that is still coming down the line. This 54 Hudson uh, Special that's coming out is just going to be a factory stock street car. Uh, that was not something that I was aware of until just here uh, this week. I was under the assumption that that was also the drag car. Uh, but Moby is, is really, really stringing out uh, their their kit so all of a sudden. Uh, you know, you got the Belvedere. You've got the Mopar Missile satellite. You've got now the Butch Leo California Flash satellite. You've got another version of the 54 Hudson, uh, the Junior uh, Dragster. I think you're saying there's going to be a stock car version of the 54 Hudson as well. At least that's what the Stevens International list looked like. You've got like two, two, at least two announced versions of the pickup truck coming. You've got the 65 Comet still off in the summer sometime. The uh, Catalina version of the of the Ventura tooling is is somewhere in the near future. And then you've got the stock car version of the 62. <laughs> They're turning into Aoshima over there, folks. They're just going to keep releasing kits with tiny little variations and take all of your money, which some of you will be more than willing to give them. I don't really do the NASCAR thing, and I don't do the drag thing, so those kits uh, will just go on by, and you guys can enjoy them, but uh, we'll get the street cars. So Anyway, I uh, hope you guys have a had a good week, and for everybody, uh, we'll see you Sunday, and everybody else, see you guys on the other side. We'll